Okay, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today we're going to be taking a look at something a little different uh, out of the ordinary. Uh, with all the concerns about online privacy and everything that's going on with people tracking your sites, the do not track lists, all of the different functionalities, and of course Congress getting involved, especially in the uh, light of an election year, there's a lot of talk about how to protect yourself online. There are of course services such as Tor, uh, the Onion Router, and other privacy proxy settings that you can use or softwares that you can download, even services that you can get online. Uh, that are out there and allow you to protect your privacy, protect your IP address, make sure that you are at least semi-anonymous when you're uh, working on the internet and browsing, uh, let's say, a shopping site or something along those lines. Today we're actually going to take a look at a device that you can purchase. It's a $60 purchase to, to get this device and of course they do have other subscription plans which we'll talk about in our full write-up that you'll see on our site at the link below this video. This is a product that's actually called SurfEasy. As you can see here, it's very thin, it's something you could carry around in your wallet. It's about the size of a credit card. And what this is, is this is actually a USB device. It slides right out. And on here is a version of Firefox Portable that's been designed specifically for SurfEasy so that when you plug this in, it's actually going to open it up, but it's also going to talk directly to SurfEasy servers. Now, this is more of a privacy service than what you're used to, where it's going to actually work with uh, SurfEasy servers. It's going to connect, it's going to anonymize your IP address and make sure that you're not going to be, uh, let's just say, hit up with something going on there. So, and of course, normally we would get a, a pop-up that would come up and tell us that this is operational, but we're not seeing that right now. Hold on, let's get this plugged in, there we go. All right, so this is gonna come up, and you'll see that we'll get all of this information here. And once it's read the, uh, this is your plug-in privacy. So we'll go ahead and hit here. Now, this is your, gonna be your password. You're gonna need to type in this password every time you connect to SurfEasy, so it makes sure that it knows that it's you, and this logs into your connection or your account with SurfEasy. So we're gonna go ahead and pause and get our password typed in, and then we'll be right back. Okay, we've gotten our SurfEasy kicked in. Uh, we basically started it up, you know, logged in. It's gonna log into the account, it's gonna connect to the servers, and then we can go ahead and start browsing. You see it's gonna open up its own web browser, this is the Firefox that we told you about. In fact, if you want to click down here on the help, all right, it's not uh, picking that up. So, <coughs> but the the SurfEasy itself is actually, like we said, it's just going to be the. Well, we don't have an alt, just a control. It's a, it's a Firefox browser. It's basically made by Mozilla. In fact, when we ran our Peacekeeper testing, it actually shows up as Firefox 10. So you have your SurfEasy. It's going to do a SurfEasy Google page. Even the Google is run through SurfEasy. Everything is going to run through their proxies. As you see here, you have a blue indicator to let you know that you are surfing with the SurfEasy system. Um, over here is going to be your login, your system settings. This is going to get you into your online account. Now we're not logged into that at the moment, but we do have some images of what that account looks like, how to set up and change your, your, your different plans that you have for SurfEasy, including your bandwidth. When you purchase the key itself like this, you get two gigabytes of bandwidth per month that you can just transfer back and forth. You can browse. It's really good for if you're just the occasional browser, you want to maybe check your mail at work or buy something online at a coffee shop. As you graduate into needing more data, they do have other plans and we'll discuss those in the write-up again so that you can see the details of what those are. We even have you know screenshots of what that's going to look like when you do that. So again, if you want to turn this off and you don't want to use their anonymous service, you just tap that and it's going to tell you that you are disabling it and then that's going to show up in red instead of blue. <coughs> so it's going to take it a couple of seconds, so we'll disable it. Okay, for some reason the SurfEasy is not picking up that we want to disable it now. Let's try it on a just a different page.
Okay, this is not actually disabling. Even though you're supposed to be able to disable this, it's not disabling on us this time. We'll take a look and see exactly why that's happening, but it looks like it's just not registering the fact that we want to turn that off. Um, it could be the fact that we're not using this on the original system that we set it up on. We did set this up on a desktop, and now, of course, we're also using this on Windows 8. So we could be running into different issues with Windows 8 and SurfEasy. But for the most part, as you're doing this, you are talking with their servers. You're going to look, everything is going to go through their servers. Now, SurfEasy will tell you they, they do not collect any of this information, and they don't collect and store. Any ISP or any service is going to collect it as it goes through. There's going to be a, a little time where they're going to buffer it. They also mention in their privacy policy and in their online terms of use that they do store some of this information periodically for troubleshooting and to improve their network. That's a very typical clause. Also want to let you know that if they receive a warrant from any government agency or law enforcement, they will track your information and store it in their servers as long as the warrant is a legal or a valid warrant. They won't just do it on the request of somebody. So you know, if you've got a copyright holder sending something, sending something over, it's not going to get them to track your information. But they do track it because it does go through their servers. They just do not maintain any of that data unless there is a warrant showing just cause as to why this would be infringing on somebody's copyright or being put to illegal purposes. So although this is going to be a great product to protect your privacy, it's not going to protect your privacy if you're thinking about doing something malicious or maybe if you want to just go out there and grab that latest song that you saw on a, on a BitTorrent site. You also have those bandwidth limitations, so this is not going to be for somebody heavy, you know, doing heavy usage. And then, of course, you have your monthly billing. <clears throat> but other than that, it is a really good product. It does function exactly the way that they advertise, and you are going to be pretty much anonymized. <clears throat> we'll go here and we'll take a look. All right, as you can see, like we said, it does anonymize your IP address. It's going to come up. This is certainly not our IP address, but it's going to push it out through multiple servers that they have, and it's going to continually rotate that. In fact, if we were to load this up a second time on, you know, pull it out and drag it through, it's not. It's going to pop up a completely different IP address. So it's going to come out. So this is protecting us here from prying eyes that uh, are going to want to tell us exactly who we are. It's also going to mask to a certain degree your actual browser. Uh, there are many utilities, Java utilities, that will pull up and say, oh, you're using this and you're using this operating system. This is going to help to mask that because it's going to push out different information to, you know, coming out of their exit servers <clears throat> versus what you would get if you were just directly connecting to a website or a forum or something like that. Again, bear in mind that in the terms and conditions that you do agree to when you sign up for this, it's going to say that you can't do anything like get online and flame the, you know, somebody really bad or talk trash about somebody or any kind of hate speech, things like that. So the ideal usage for this product is if you were sitting in a coffee shop and you wanted to get online, check your mail, you wanted to get online, check your email, something like that. It's going to give you some protection from that. Uh, again, nothing is 100% secure. So if somebody can lock it, somebody can unlock it. You want to be careful with any of the information that you store or use. It does contain a sandbox feature. So somebody would have to break out of the sandbox. But as we've seen recently in many of the pwn to own competitions, as well as the uh, chromium, comp uh, chromium competitions that they had for Chrome, it is possible to break out of the sandbox with the right tools and with the right application if you, know, you just have to try hard enough. So this is not going to give you 100% protection. It's going to give you a good amount of protection and going to make sure that if you're just sitting there and doing casual browsing, somebody's not going to pick it up. Another thing that this will do, it will get around some of the website blocking that are put in place at many workplaces. We don't recommend it doing that because it's simply the fact of plugging in a USB key at your workplace can violate the conditions under which you work. Um, it's considered installing a, a piece of hardware onto your system. So again, we wouldn't recommend it for that. Just bear in mind that if you want to get out there and you want to do some browsing and you don't necessarily want to expose yourself to malicious eyes or to tracking, this can be a huge help for that. And that's really what the product is intended for. And again, it works very well. So far, we have not seen where there's any issues other than the issue with the um, SurfEasy logo not changing from blue to red when you're not operating in that protected mode. As you saw, we actually did have it turned off. We discovered that very quickly. And now, um, but that logo, which should turn red when, when SurfEasy is off, doesn't turn red when you're on Windows 8. When you're on Windows 7, Windows XP, Windows Vista, it's going to turn red to indicate that you are not in a protected state. 
However, on Windows 8 here, it's just not doing that. It uh, appears to be a Windows 8 issue. We'll get in touch with SurfEasy and let them know that this is the case, and we're sure that they'll have updates to this. Every time you launch SurfEasy, it's going to look for the latest software and update their browser as well as their protection routines that are in there. And it's a really nice product, and for 60 bucks, if you're just looking for something to casually use and to cover yourself when you're out there browsing for your, browsing your email or checking for things online, this is going to be a great product. We absolutely do not feel that this is a 100% secure product, so we wouldn't recommend it for any, let's say, other activities. Um, in fact, some of, that, some of those activities might be excluded in the terms and conditions, and if you do violate it or they feel you're violating it, they will close your account. So that covers the SurfEasy. It's a pretty simple product. It's not going to be anything big. You want to close everything out. You just pull it out. It shuts down the browser. It doesn't maintain a browsing history. It doesn't keep anything inside of it. And everything pretty much just operates off of this small USB key.